Hello, it's Chris, and welcome back to Something Else Amiga. I know, I know, it's been a while, I've been a little busy. This is going to be the test of the Re 4091. Chris Super and Stefan Renard. I went over this briefly on an unboxing video a while back, and I was so excited I had to have it, and then I didn't do anything with it. Why? I'm taking care of your stuff. It's okay. We're here to do it now. Seven months later, but you know, it's all good. This is like a recreation of an homage to the 4091 card from Commodore. This is a perfect recreation. I'm talking down to the label on the disc. She's a beaut. And I don't want to use it. I want to use it, but I just don't. It's just so beautiful to me that I uh, just don't, I don't want to, I don't want to use it. It has the SCSI 2 Terminator board. It has the uh, Stefan's Rami adapter. It has the 3000 Rami adapter. That lets you use a new Fat Gary. Some upgrading your ROM instructions. An actual SCSI cable. The headers for the lights. And the open source A4091 ROM in there. It also has a Dave Haney signed copy of the original stuff on what this is. The cables, the Terminator, the support disc, the user manual, the creators. Those two guys right there. Wonderful. Thank you guys so much for making this. It does say please read carefully. The 4091 only works in the 3000 Tower, 4000 Tower, that have the Zorro 3 bus system. Probably a 4000 and 3000 also, because I get Zorro 3. But this does, it does say T, or does that mean both? Yeah, 3000 tower, 4000 and tower computers that feature the Zorro 3 bus system. If you're Zorro, if you're Zorro 2, well, it says there's plenty of other SCSI cards for you, but there's no way to make the 4090 work, 4091 work on such a system. Please note, this sucker has DMA, so you're going to need a Super Buster 11 for the best performance. Uh, it requires the Super Buster 11. 3,000 comes with a 6 or a 7. 4,000s are a 9. Some are 11. Please upgrade your stuff before trying to use this card to prevent data loss and instability. While this card might work with Amiga OS 3 or below, we highly recommend that you use at least Amiga OS 3.1. This card works fine with 3.2.1, and I'm presuming above since this was last year. Now let's get to the meat and potatoes. Now Gadget UK just got one of these for his birthday. Happy birthday. But none of y'all mofs got this one. She's purple. She's serial number five. And you can see why I don't want to use it. Even Haney's is serial number seven. So, gosh, it's just so beautiful. I know, stop looking at it. Why don't you just give it a kiss? It's just so beautiful. It has my ROM key and all that stuff from Kluanto. She's officially licensed. I've been touching on her like a girlfriend. I'm going to have to wipe this thing down. All right, so we're going to use the 3000 Tower. Do some basic benchmarks on its internal SCSI bus right now. It is rocking a Zulu SCSI. The blue card, V1.1, is not a blue SCSI. It's a blue colored Zulu. Let me lift this 68 pound beast up on the table. We're going to have to open up her side panel, show a little leg. All right, this thing hasn't been on since I don't know when. I'm using the 4000's tower mouse, a regular 3000 keyboard. We are not running the GBS 8200 because of Amber. Let's see what happens. This is the Amiga. It has a 68040 in it. We are running currently in NTSC, high res laced, eight color. Write Amiga L if you want to leave something out of the desktop, then write Amiga S when you click on it to snapshot its location. I keep looking at the camera like I have to because of the microphone. All right, here we go. This is the Amiga 3000 Tower, ECS, 68040, 882, yada, 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 yada. Stock 3000 SCSI controller. Whoops. We'll give her the cold shower pull. Won't even have to. 
looking pretty good for what she is in an 040. We are rolling. We are four times faster than the 3000 and 1.0 to the four. So we know where we stand. Drives DH0 Fast File System International with three 100 buffers using SCSI dot device. Okay. Yeah. So we are Zulu, two Zulu SCSIs, 3.6 gig, 2.7. 1.1, so it's the blue Zulu SCSI, same that I'll have in the 4000 tower to test. I'll put it back in. So DH1, 2.1, that's more like it. So 2.184. So let's round the 8 up, so 2.2 megs per second. That's the easy part. Now I have to shut all this down and take it all apart. To remove the tower, Amiga 3000 tower, there is a hand little pushy at the bottom where you kind of pull out. I don't yank on it. I give it a tap because there's two tabs up here, one here and one here that kind of hold it together. And I just, I am so careful with them because if they snap off, you got to do the old, you saw, I did the crazy glue with the cyanacrylate with baking soda, makes instant concrete. You see all your little faces and covers here. I'm going to take off one, two, three, four screws with the powered screwdriver. Tower has a built-in SCSI system itself, and you know, we don't want to. We don't want to cross paths with that. Big metal, it's like working on a bulldozer. So you can clearly see here our SCSI device. She goes up into here, which we're just gonna pull out. Okay, there we go. We're running kick 3.2.2. Here's our SCSI cable, here's our Zulu. It's gonna use SCSI termination power, as you can see, as noted by my last video. I am not removing the drivetrain in this case. We do have in here the uh, Live2 Gotta Go Faster in the top slot, followed by the Commodore 2065 Ethernet. We have two blanks and then the Delphina. I keep my drive blank in here. Got the old ankle bracelet on for, yep. Power's grounding it, not on. Here we go. I'm gonna actually look in the official guide here, which is just beautiful. Thick cardstock. Smells like seventh grade ditto paper tests. Here we go. Checking for Super Buster 11. I can't see it. I don't know what chip is in here. Oh God. Super Buster 07. Good thing I looked at that. All right, let's put an 11 in it. Where are you gonna get 11, Chris? I've had a couple of Amigas in my day and we're going to uh, just go like that. Wee! PLCC extractor, Anal Logic. Uh. SB11, it's one of the original ones I bought from Anal Logic. Uh. There we go, Analogic uh, SB11. You can't see that, but there's an Analogic sticker on it. Uh, Why do you call it Analogic? Uh, Shop there, you'll see. Love your selection. Don't like your shipping costs. Slider in here. Whew. Just, just carefully line her up. There we go, that'll work. So there's your purple this, your purple that. Gotta go faster, here's the dude. Okay, energize, light comes on, hard drives are blinking, don't know if I have to set jumpers or not, unsure, SCSI bus is blinking and checking itself here, and it is doing something, it's just booted, I am going to put this support disc in, here's the jumpers for SCSI addresses and the IDs and Fast SCSI bus. Ooh. If your device doesn't work on fast SCSI bus, use a shorter cable. Like the one in the box. We're going to do that. Shorter long spin up synchronous mode. Nice. Oh, it's on by default. External termination if you want to use that termination board. Logical unit enable. And all these address settings for devices for the board, where the light is, to the LED front panel. Aha, perfect, how to put it in the 3000, the 4000. 
Soul will test the 4091 for correct operation. 4091 minus T. Pass, 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 and pass, and pass, and pass, and pass. Okay, let's check out the hard drive speed. So my DH1 partition is currently unreadable because it has a very large partition on 3.2.2. whatever. 3.2.1, I believe at the time. And uh, let me take this disc out. Put it back in its little plastic container from ADF, just so I have it. 4.4 drives DH0. It sees it second dot SCSI dot device. It's not not being that. Uh, 4091 dot device. Speed 6.553600. What was my old one? What was the old one? Two and some change? Doesn't read DH1. The hard drive is trying to read. It's got a light on it. You're freaking out. A plus mark, it tripled my speed. But I'm missing my second partition. Doesn't mean it's the end of the world. I just gotta work through that and figure out what's going on. Right, so I'm gonna get a wobble pop. Do you want one? <laughs> you know it sounds good on a hot summer day. That. Yep, basic 3.2 and DH1 is still unreadable. Well that just sucks the eggs. Doesn't support large hard drives. So on the 4091 is my ROM. Is my little my ROM thing. Which I'm gonna pull out. Alright. Out with the 4091 ROM, in with the open source. I'm going to check out that right mouse button thing, too. Ooh, check this out. This is the new ROM. Shows me my junk. Shows me my dip switches. Wow. Slow bus mode. Slow bus mode? That said fast. That is freaking cool. Stefan and Chris, holy shit. That is cool. Discs. There's my two discs. 15 gig. Yippee freaking skippy. That's freaking awesome. Good. It sees it. Debug. CD-ROM boot. No way. That sounded like Duke Nukem, didn't it? All right. Let's just say boot. Let's see what's up. I do have a hard drive light I could plug into the card here. Hard drive blinking, and it's up already. And we got the H1 back, and everything's back. Okay, so that's my answer. You need the new ROM. You need the new ROM. All right, now let's check this beast speed. Dang it, I always do that. I'm sorry. I always do that. My phone's been going off like mad, but I have it on mute. Drives, DH1 is slower. 6.553, DH0. It's gonna be slow because I got 30 buffers. 336. DH1 has 80. 6.5. Let's up the buffers on that image real quick. The A4091 MF version 40.13 ROM is uh that comes in it, works, but limited on hard drives. The open ROM with CD-ROM boot support, epic. I don't know how that works. All right, she pops right up like a fresh can of tuna. Drives, let's try DH1 now. Boom, 6.53. So that is the ticket. 300 buffers, DH0. Still a little slow, 332. I don't know why DH0 is slow. I think it's just how I made the image. Yeah, it's just taking too long to read the drive. This one, poof. A4091.device, six surfaces. What's this one say? 16 surfaces, that's why it's the, it's just the way I made the file. My bad. All right, so with that, let's take this back to 3.9. Take my 3.9 and Cut and paste. And now I'm just gonna boot the card again and I'm back to whatever OS I want. Now I film videos about three months in advance. So when you're watching this, it was three months ago. Just because I've neglected to put this out for so long. Because I've had some repairs and things to do for you guys and 
you know, I've been working on some stuff. Okay, so we're back to where we were when we first started, and I actually have my DH1 volume that is 10.1 gigs free, 4.5 in use. How does it fare? Drives, DH0, 6.553600, DH1, A4091 dot device. So it is now the new ROM is the one that's the A4091 dot device. I had the factory Commodore ROM in here. That's the one with the Cloanto license on her. I mean, it works. It just doesn't support the large hard drives in the way that I need it. And I want the right mouse button support. That is freaking awesome. Like make a disc and have it boot from it. That would be cool. So I don't know about that. That's gonna be an advanced lesson for me. But look, it's been a long time coming, everybody, with the 4091, the re-4091, A4091, whatever you want to call it. It's freaking awesome. The ROM change for the open beta one with the little on-screen doohickey and the stuff made it for me. Allows larger hard drives, unless I just don't know what I'm doing with the original ROM and I'll mess with it some more. I'm gonna read the online documentation in further detail because when you get something new, you just wanna roll with it. So I just gotta read through this thing and see what's going on with frequently asked questions and what's all the stuff in the archive. And so we'll have to check into that. But this has been my review quickly of a basic speed comparison. I tripled my speed on this card. 4091 over the stock Amiga 3000's SCSI dot device. I did have to change the ROM from its 4091 factory to the open one that it came with. And uh, that woke her up like night and day. I was getting one and two megs, now I'm getting six again. So some science and math were going on behind the scenes and it could be my configuration in my Zulu. Now this Zulu, which is ironic, is not the fastest ball of wax that I have. I tried the blue Zulu because I figured, you know, we're gonna use the blue one because that what was in there and here's the uh, 2040 drive. I mean, it's still, it's freaking fast. It is fast, fast, fast. That is gonna wrap it up for me for now. That has been a more detailed on hands first run learning curve test with the RE4091 from Chris Hooper and Stefan Renauer. Sorry if I butcher your last name all the time. But it's an incredible dot, an incredible dot device. It is an incredible dot device and where you can get yours from. And I've had mine for a long time and I had to beg and plead and swear and sell my fingers for purple. But it's okay. You can get one too. Go to scuzzy.me. I'll plop it down here in this area and you can go there and click hey give me one and you can have one too. Don't know how long it's going to take. We got Kavanaugh's building them on the east coast of the USA and he's shipping all over the world and Chris and them are still building them also. So thank you guys for building that and thank you all for coming along on this journey. Until next time, thanks for watching and I hope you learned something.